Hey everyone, it's Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are, whatever it is that you may be doing. I hope that you are well and I hope that you are safe. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen because this is the first episode in our week long celebration to crackers, all things savory crackers this week here in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. So, you haven't missed an episode if you're wondering. This is the first episode and, um, you know, just to, so I suppose, kick it off with a bit of a bang, I've decided to do for you guys a particular cracker recipe that has very, very quickly became, become the favorite bake in our house. It is so popular, in fact, um, certain husband and wife have been known to hide the container <laughs> from each other <laughs> because they are that good. Thankfully, they're really easy to make. So that's one, at least that's one thing. And um, the crackers that we're gonna be making tonight, I actually call them flackers. Now, if you're wondering what a flacker is, and please hold on for all the cracker puns that I'm gonna try and put as many cracker puns into this video as possible, but I call them flackers because, <laughs> because basically they are um, made from flaxseed and flaxseed is incredibly good for us. I call it literally a fiber bomb. So I'll talk a bit more about the health benefits of um, the ingredients that we're putting today into our flackers. Like I said, they're so simple. You do not need any fancy gadgets. You literally need a bowl and that's it. So you know what? Let's get into the recipe or should I say let's crack on? It's gonna be a cracker of a week. Um, I better crack to it. Yes, that's three. All right, see if you guys, I'd love to hear your cracker puns too as we're going throughout this broadcast as well. So come on down to my bench. Let's make flackers. And as I was saying, easy peasy peasy. So I've got nothing here, but literally a bowl, of course, and my scales. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is um, literally mixing everything in this one bowl. So as I was saying, Really, really, really simple. So I put the bowl straight onto the scales so I can measure straight into the scales. And of course, what would um, flaxseed crackers be without flaxseed? So what I have in my jar here, this is flaxseed meal. So this is basically this, which are, which are flax seeds, ground down to make a meal. Also a flour, I suppose, if you want to call it that. So that's what I have in, in this jar here. Um, so you can either buy flaxseed meal already ground up if you can find it or if you're struggling with it and can, it can be a, a bit hard to find I haven't seen a, a lot of flaxseed meal in the supermarkets but I have seen it in a few um, all you need to do is buy some flax seeds and then grind them either in a really um, fast food processor until they resemble that or and I'll show you the sec the way that you can do it um, afterwards as well um, while we're waiting for our crackers to sit so I'll show you another way that you can make your own flaxseed meal so taking up your flaxseed meal we're going to be adding in 110 grams and by the way this recipe makes 20 to 30 flackers so you get a really good a really good um you know dose of crackers out of this so 110 grams which is just under four ounces for our american friends 110 well i'm nearly out of i'm nearly out of flaxseed meal as you can see which is fine because I can make my own from the flaxseed. Right, by the way, flaxseed comes in either, this is called golden flaxseed as you can see, quite light, and you get darker ones as well. There is no nutritional difference between the colors. It is just that the darker flax seeds are, have a bit more of a nuttier flavor. The lighter golden ones obviously taste a bit more mild. So once again, I'll leave that up to you. And of course, the, the golden ones will give you a more golden cracker. So in here, I've mainly got actually dark flax seeds, as you can see, that's quite a dark, that's quite a dark meal there. So 110 grams of that. Next ingredient we're gonna be adding is my, one of my favorites, chia seeds. And we're going to be adding in two tablespoons of chia seeds. Once again, doesn't matter what color, whether they're white or they're dark chia seeds, same nutritional quality, just obviously cosmetically different. So two tablespoons of those go in. In this little jar here, I have um, hemp seeds, which we believe. Hemp seeds or hemp hearts as they're known. And you want to put in two tablespoons of hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are really, really high in protein. They've also got some good fats in there and um, yeah, just really, really good for us. And they taste really nutty, so they're gonna be a nice addition. So two tablespoons of those. Only a couple more ingredients to go, would you believe? And then our black seeds, just crackers need to be mixed. In this little jar here, this cute little jar, 
I have my ground wakami. So it's little pieces of dried seaweed that I grind in my food processor, basically to make like a powder. One teaspoon of that goes in. Trust me, the flavor is amazing. I've tried it without, I've tried this recipe without that bit of, of um, ground wakami and then with, and I much prefer the with, with. And as well as that, let's also add in a teaspoon of mineral salt goes in there as well. So those are the basic ingredients. That's it, easy, 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 easy. Give it a bit of a stir, just like that. And then, all we're gonna do to bring it all together is literally add water. Oh, I need my scales one more time, where are they? We need to add the water. It's best to do it on the scales because then you get an exact measure. And I'm putting into here, I'm putting in 120 mils, which is about four fluid ounces of water. Like it's a really good idea to start learning to, to weigh your water on scales. It absolutely gets it real perfect. So that 120 mils, four fluid ounces, don't need the scales anymore. And then you just give this a bit of a mix. And what you want to do now is just to leave this cracker dough. It's a cracker of a dough. <laughs> Oh gosh, don't worry, I won't give up my day job. I won't start doing stand-up. That's about as funny as I get, unfortunately. But um, once you've given it a bit of a mix, you wanna leave your dough just to sit, and as it sits for about 10 minutes, it's gonna thicken, because remember the chia seeds gel up, and that, that um, the flaxseed fiber is gonna start to swell as well, and we're gonna get a really nice, I mean, it's already pretty thick, but I just want it to be a little bit thicker. So you wanna leave it at this point, between five to 10 minutes. While we are waiting for that, the first thing I wanna show you is how, to, how I make my own flaxseed meal. So, um, yes, I have a mini food processor, but I also have one of these little cool gadgets. If you've never seen this before, this is actually a coffee or spice grinder. It's quite a small one. Well, they usually are pretty small, but it has so much power, and it can literally turn you know, things like flaxseeds uh, into a fine meal within seconds. So if you don't have a fast food processor um, and you and you do, it does take a bit of time, you know, to make either you know nut flour because you can obviously do almond flour in here and all sorts of other things. And if you find that it takes a bit of time, you could literally purchase one of these little coffee or spice grinders. They're only usually about twenty bucks, and I'll show you how fast you can make meals that fast, like literally that fast. And if you're making almond flour, that fast. If you're making sunflower seed flour, that fast. Pumpkin seed flour, if you wanna play around with different nuts, it makes it that fast. If you want to make chia seed flour, quinoa flour, it happens and it happens in the blink of an eye. And they literally cost about between 20, you know, if you could, you could probably, I, don't, I haven't seen them at Kmart, but chances are you can buy one at Kmart. But this one here is a Sunbeam. I think it cost me at the time 25 bucks, got it on special, and I've had it for, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> and that's what it can do. But you can also put all your spices in here and make, you know, ma and make um, obviously, your, your own spice mixes. But you know what's really cool about this? Is that I like to put my... Uh, zero as sugar erythritol into here, into here, and then you can make like icing sugar, you know, powdered, fine powder or confectioner's sugar with the erythritol. You can make it super duper fine if you put it in here, and it literally takes seconds bzzz, and it's done. It's so cool. So that's how I make flax meal, but you know, you can still definitely use your food processor, or if you have a really fast or high powered blender, you can do that as well. But I just, yeah, that, I, I wish I had one in every room of the house. <laughs> yes, mate. Every greeting said, your six-year-old daughter just said, Mum, please tell her it looks very good. Oh, oh, thank you. I've just been complimented. Thank you, my darling. Do we, do we know her name? The little... What's her name, Debbie? Oh, yeah. Debbie, what's her name? I want to give a shout out to that. I've got, we've got a very um, interested watcher. Doesn't matter the age, right? We all learn something new. Now, what you can see that's happened here is it's starting to thicken up. I'm gonna leave, leave it for just a few more seconds because I wanna talk about the health benefits really quickly with you guys when it comes to the ingredients. So, um, flaxseed, which is, you know, this, this is meal, flax seeds 
have what is known as two well, they have two types of fibers in them they have a soluble fiber and they have an insoluble fiber and what that basically means is they are packed full of dietary fiber so um, fiber as we all know helps to keep us consistent down there and I know you don't normally talk about this sort of thing in polite circles but it is really important that we actually have a bit of a conversation about poo I know and probably there's a few people having the giggle right now but it's really important and trust me I would rather have this conversation with you guys than with our teenagers it's way easier so um, when it comes to fiber fiber helps consistency fiber helps things come out more regularly fiber makes sure that things are of a good decent size I mean fiber is literally the building blocks of poo and so with fiber and because we've got soluble and insoluble fiber in our flax seeds that means that you're going to get all those consistencies and in, 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 I don't want to say quality but literally um, when it comes to going to the bathroom all in one because there's both soluble and insoluble fiber so it's really really amazing in terms of getting yourself regular it's really good if for people who suffer from IBS IBS as you know you can either have diarrhea or constipation it's one or the other you know it's quite terrible and quite a bit of pain this can help things to keep going through your system, going through your colon, which is really, really important. So um, it's also really good source, by the way, of omega-3 fatty acids. So for people who don't eat fish, I'm talking about those oily fishes like sardines, yum, or salmon, or things like that. You just, you know, if you're not a fish eater, or especially if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, this is, this, this, where are they? I'm gonna get to the, these ones. These are a really good source of plant-based omega-3 fatty acids, and those are the fatty acids that are so vital. They feed our brain, they do some of the most wonderful things to our bodies, and they are absolutely essential in our diet. So that's good, they have lots of omega-3 fatty acids. But you know, as well as being great on the, in the bathroom, being great for our brain, um, fiber also helps to regulate our blood glucose. So for people who are diabetic or people who um, are insulin resistant, black seed's really good for regulating blood sugar. Uh, flax seed and fiber helps to keep you feeling full. So if you're, if you're here for weight loss, this is the thing for you, like these flackers are totally for you. Um, but they also are a really good source of plant-based protein. So flax seeds are amazing. You guys know how good chia seeds are, right? They are also really high in fiber. They will also, they also got omega-3s in them that will feed your brain. They're fuel for the body. Um, I love fiber seeds. And then of course we move on to our hemp seeds, which is the third ingredient. And once again, protein. And once again, really good quality, healthy fats in all of these things as well. So overall, you're kind of winning. Yes, we've got a question, my Debbie's daughter's name is Frida. Ah, Debbie's daughter. Hi, Frida. I hope I didn't put you off by our last little conversation, but we have to talk about the toilet sometimes. I know it's a bit naughty, and as I was saying, we don't normally do it in um, polite society, but anyway, I digress. Let's crack into it. I know. I, got a, I don't have a million of them. I wish I did. Mahi's laughing. Thanks, Mahi. Yes, Mahi. Lisa's asked, can you add flaxseed to yogurt? Can you, uh, Lisa asked, can you add, add flaxseeds to yogurt? Absolutely. Now here's a little trick for you guys. You see here, we'll just, this is the last thing about flaxseed, I promise, and we'll go into the rest of the recipe. Of course, flaxseeds, flaxseed meal. Which one is better, right? Well, you can obviously just sprinkle flaxseeds onto anything, sprinkle them onto salads, you know, put them into, you name it, right? Flaxseed meal, on the other hand, will help to bind things. It can act as a thickening agent. But flaxseed meal is way easier for your body to digest. So you will get better quality um, nutrients. So this is more bioavailable to your body because your body can digest this a lot easier. And sometimes these guys here, if they haven't been ground down, will actually pass right through and your body won't be able to break down and absorb as many nutrients from them as the meal. So just a little, another little tidbit. I promise that is it. I won't talk about flax seeds anymore because it's time to move on. As you can see, this is now, you know, a really decent looking dough very very decent all we need to do now is to roll it out so i have my flat and i'm using a flat baking sheet um, and the reason i'm using a flat baking sheet is because i then have the ability to just turn the dough straight out onto 
you know, the baking sheet here and then roll it out. If your baking sheet's got, you know, got like a, a, a lip around it, so it's not completely flat, what you want to do is to take the baking paper off and just roll it out on a bench and then add the roll crackers to, because to, it's gonna be really hard to roll flat if you've got a really big lip on your, on your baking sheet. But as you can see, mine is pretty flat, so it makes this process really easy. So bottom is quite large, as you can see as well. It actually hangs over the edge. And then I'm gonna take another sheet of baking paper, just as big, because the easiest way to roll any type of crackers is, and this is such a good little tip, Anytime you're wanting to, you know, to cook crackers or make these sort of biscuits where the dough, you know, may stick to your rolling pin, is you literally do it between two sheets of baking paper. And you don't have to throw the baking paper away afterwards as well. You can keep it and keep it and keep it and keep using it until it gets nasty. So, well not nasty, but you know, and you keep it until you don't need to keep it anymore and it's time to move on to another piece. So it's not just a one-use baking paper here as well. And in fact, I, don't, I think this, is, this has been through about three loads of flackers. Because Mahi and I love them so much, and there is just a slight competition in our house, <laughs> and um, these crackers are part of that competition because, you know, it's sort of like, ooh, I wonder if I can eat a few more without anyone noticing. They're that good, I'm serious, they are amazing. They have, they've already gone into the high rotate. Um, baking schedule in our house because you know if you think about what's in here these ingredients are all good these are the sort of ingredients that you can you know you can have this as a snack and you do not need to feel even an ounce of guilt because you're actually doing your body a massive massive favor and because you know if you are a little peckish and you do find that you know you you find that maybe at certain times of the day you start heading for a snack this is a way better snack to head for than most other snacks. So what you're looking for is you're looking for about sort of, you know, I'm talking millimeters, like two to four millimeters of thickness with your dough. It doesn't need, you know, it doesn't, you don't want it to be too thick, but you also don't want it to be too thin. So if I can kind of pick that up and show you, I don't know if I can show you, you can kind of see there. That's the sort of thickness that you're after when it comes to the dough. And, you know, try and keep it quite even when you are um, rolling them out. If you want to get like like really good squares, then this might be a nice little trick as you, you kind of take some off that side and build it up there, you know, and sort of do a little bit of surgery. Can do that, can, can, if you want to. Yes, we got another question. Linda just asked, is that the 28 day program for Ah, uh, Linda just asked, is this 28 day program for me? Good question, Linda, and the, Best and easiest answer for that is if it's not on the program, then no, it's not friendly. Unfortunately, I would, st I would, you, uh, if I was you, I would stick to the program, stick to the recipes, stick to what's in the in the books and booklets, and um, and 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 keep this one for when you're not on the program. Remember, the program's only for 30 days. This is life, and this is life. This is what we do for our whole life. This is the sort of food that we eat. So you've got lots of time to eat this gorgeousness. All right, that comes off. Like I said, let's keep that for another, another time and another place. And then you just want to take yourself up a sharp knife and just literally score the crackers. You can also do this with a pizza, you know, if you've got a pizza wheel. But I'll keep, you know, leave it up to you. You don't have to, you know, apply any pressure. It's best to use the point of the knife because you get nice lines. And it doesn't stick to the knife as well. And we're going to go that way. I might just take that little, those little edges off because then I'm going to get really nice squares. But who cares if they're squares? They can be rustic as well. Just do what you want to do. Squares, rectangles. I, don't, I wouldn't even bother to like cut out and make them that perfect because sometimes rustic is best, right? All right, so that's ready to go in the oven. The oven is set at 170 degrees Celsius, which is 3 120 degrees Fahrenheit and you're going to put these in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes but please check them after about 15 minutes and after 15 minutes just turn the tray around just to make sure that those bits here at the edge cook really evenly because you know these edges will cook first and what you might find after 20 minutes is that the middle might still need a bit more cooking and the edges are done literally just break off the edges put them on a wire rack and pop this back in the oven so 20 to 25 minutes remember every oven is different so that's a guide for you guys but just keep an eye on the middle parts because they're obviously the ones that are going to take longer to cook all right 
hence some I prepared earlier. And they haven't been eaten. <laughs> wow, that's a bonus. So here we go. Da 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 da. That, that's, that's kind of a squarish one, which is really good. But I just want to show you, like once once they come out of the oven, let them cool on the tray for about five, ten minutes. And then you can literally pick them up. And remember that I told you about the scoring? It's just a matter of just gently breaking them with your fingers and they break really, really, really well. Just like that. They're fantastic. Just like that. Okay, so. Um, once you've broken them all up, allow them to completely cool down on the tray, uh, on, on a wire rack. And then when they're completely cool, you can pop them into an airtight container. And these should last. And I say should, because you're probably going to eat them. But if you don't eat them, <laughs> and you're like, huh? What do you mean if you don't eat them? What is that? If you don't eat them, they should last for a whole week in your airtight container. Um, and how do they taste? Well. I already told you they taste pretty good. They are literally just good, just like that, as a snack. They taste amazing, right? Mm, they're nice and crunchy. Mm, they're so well balanced. I love that little hit of wakami in there. It really does give it just something a little bit different. It's really, really nice. I can taste also the hemp seeds in there. They're just fabulous on their own. But I want to show you how I like to have them. Mm, my little naughty way, of course. Cheese. Have them with cheese. Amazing. But have them with a good quality cheese. Like you want to choose a cheese like a really well aged Parmesan cheese or a well aged Gouda. So always think when it comes to if you want to, if you want to eat cheese, there are better cheeses to eat than other cheeses. The cheeses that you want to go for, and I'm not talking about sitting there and eating an entire block. I'm talking about sitting there and having a bit of cheese with your, you know, with your day. Best cheese for gut health. And this is creating a very diverse um, gut bacteria. Um, if you're looking, the only soft cheese that, not only, but one of the best soft cheeses that you can have if you do like soft rinded cheese is a camembert. A really good quality camembert is going to help to grow the healthy, your heart healthy gut bacteria. Other cheeses that are really good in keeping your gut happy include a really good aged Parmesan cheese or Parmigiano Reggiano. You can also look at a good aged Edam, like I'm talking about the hard cheeses, so Edam, um, cheddar, good quality of course. I love cheddar, I love cheddar so much. Um, Gouda is one of my favourite. Gouda is Gouda, as we say in our house. We think it's very Gouda. Oh, the puns are coming thick and fast tonight. So Gouda is another really, really good one. But you want to go for an aged cheese and you want to go for a hard cheese. If not, and you like it soft, <laughs> Go for a camembert. They're the best ones for helping to build and maintain a healthy gut bacteria. So there are good cheeses, and yes, you can have your flackers with cheese. 100%. Oh yes, a question from Mahi. Do you keep them in the pantry, and how long do they last for? Okay, do we, where do we keep our crackers? Our flackers. You can keep your flackers in the pantry. They're probably going to last you for about a, about a week with an inner air kite set airtight container. They're going to last even longer in the fridge. You can put them either or. I'll leave it up to you. Quite frankly, they haven't lasted that long in our house so far, so not sure whether they can last more than a week. We'll have to revisit that one. I have to hide them so well that I don't even know where they are. Maybe I'll find them that way. All right, so cheese is one good way to have them. On their own, as a snack, is another good way to have them. They are also really, really good with avocado. You literally treat it like a little mini bit of bread. Avocado. Tomato, amazing. If you have ever made your own homemade pate, homemade pate which I'm going to be running through a recipe with you guys because pate is so incredibly good for our, our um, gut health as well. You could do a bit of homemade pate on here, but this is how I like to have them. Are you ready? It's very simple and it's very delicious. Check this out. This is my daisy, my daisy butter container. So on here, I'm not sure if you can, you can see that properly. On here, I have oh, soft, soft and gorgeous grass-fed butter. Because grass-fed butter is also a very good healthy fat for us to have. But make sure, if you can, that you're getting your butter from a good source. We don't eat a lot of butter in this house, but we eat what we do eat. I make sure it's the best quality that we can buy. So grass-fed butter, just like that. Trust me, it is the I reckon it's the best way. Mm. It's wonderful. Just like that. So, now I've got a mouthful of flackers. Ah, oh, cracks. 
So, um, by the way, if you'd like a copy of this recipe, I am releasing it tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, so you can get your own copy of it delivered straight to your messenger inbox. Um, that's going to be done tomorrow. But of course, we have more flacker, no, cracker recipes coming up this week. I've got a couple more that I want to share with you. They're all um, nut-free, which is very exciting. So this is not just a cracker week, this is also a nut-free cracker week. So I look forward to seeing you all coming up through the week. I hope you enjoyed these wonderful flackers. They are good. Give them a try. You will like them. And until um, we see each other again back here in Bridget's Kitchen, I hope that you stay safe and you stay well and um, you stay healthy. Until then, we'll talk soon.